Now let's look at work, energy, and power. So the questions that come out for this topic is fairly straightforward. They just need you to remember what is the formula. So work is equals to force multiplied by distance in the direction of the force. Energy, the two types of energy that you need to know is your gravitational potential energy, which is mgh, kinetic energy, which is half mv square. Power is equal to either work over time or energy over time. The main thing that they constantly want to test you is if you remember the units that you need to use. So let's say if work, if we want to calculate it in joules, force need to be in newtons, it's quite straightforward. Distance need to be in meters. So if the question is in cm kilometers, you need to convert. For energy over here is also in joules, so mass need to be in kilograms. G is pretty standard. Most of the time it's 10 uh, newton per, per kg or 10 meter per second square. Height need to be in meters. So for kinetic energy, joules, velocity, velocity need to be meter per second, mass need to be in kilograms. Power, time need to be in seconds. So if they give it to you in minutes and in hours, you need to convert them. So mainly it's about this, okay? Let's just go through some of the questions quickly. Let's look at this first one from 2017 paper. So wow, they give so much room for a big massive diagram, but actually it's very simple. Pump storage power station, electrical energy is generated at times of low demand it's used to pump water from a lake to upper reservoir as illustrated in the figure. Pump raises water to the lake to the upper reservoir at a rate of 3.0 times 10 to the power of 6 kg per minute. So you see over here, they set a tram. Minutes. The height through which the water raise is 250 meters. So this is fine. Calculate the useful output power of the pump when raising the water. So over here, raising it, the formulas that are involved is your gravitational potential energy and then later on, which is your power. To solve for power, we need to know what is the energy per unit time, which this must be in seconds. To solve for our energy, we need to solve for GPE, okay? We need to calculate what is the energy. So if I can find GPE in one second, that is actually my power already. So over here, they, they tell you the mass of the water that's happening in one minute. So one minute will give you 3.0 times 10 to the power 6 kilogram, which this is actually mass. So this is going to go inside our formula of mgh. H is constant at 520. G, this is 520. This is 10, they're given you. So what you want to find is this. So this, you can find the answer over here. But one minute is 3.0 times 10 to the power 6. I want to find what is one second, okay? So GP in one second. So one second is equals to divide by 60. So I will get 5 times 10 to the power 4. And once I have this, I can actually find my power already. Power is equal to mgh, which is mass is 5 times 10 to the power 4, multiplied by 10, multiplied by 5 to 0. And divide by, what is the time? It's actually 1 second, because this is 1. Just punch it in your calculator, you get 2.6 times 10 to the power 8 joules. No, sorry. What you saw for this. So you see the traps they set. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, 2016 question. Again, wow, a lot of space for one big diagram. Rocket this time round, okay? All trying to scare you only. So stage one carries the fuel to take the rocket above the Earth's atmosphere at a height of 67 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Stage one has no more fuel detaches from the rest of the rocket at this height. Stage one has a mass of 1.3 times 10 to the power 5 kg and a speed of 2.3 what? 
kilometers per second. So again, what did we say? For units, in this case for speed, we need meters per second. So we need to convert this to meters per second. Right? That's why it tells you three marks. So kinetic energy at stage one at this point. So Ke is equals to half mv squared. So this is the easy part. So what we need is to convert 2.3 kilometer per second to what meters per second. So you have 2.3 to convert kilometers to meters multiply by 1000. Seconds is still 1. So the answer is 2300 meters per second. Okay? Alright, so then now we can solve already. Half mass is in kg? Yeah, so it's cool. 1.3 times 10 to the power 5. V, we use this 2300 0, 0, and you will get your answer. I'm not even going to press you. Press yourself. So you see, the main thing they're testing you, conversion of units. Let's go to the next one. Next, wow, this one more creative. Archer fires an arrow vertically upward in the air. Please don't do this. The arrow is going to come out and then cut you and then you die. Okay, so never do this at home. I don't understand why do they want to shoot arrow vertically upwards. But never mind, okay, it's hard to come up with questions. The spring of the bow is pulled back a distance of 60 cm. Ah, see over here, there's a trap again. You need for length, what do we need to use? Meters. Okay, so here, this is the one. The average force of 125 Newton. Arrow has a mass of 0 0.18 kg, so they are kind, they never give you gram, no need to do work. Energy transferred is 75%. This is 10. Ignoring any effects of friction, calculate the work done in pulling back the, string, the string of the bow. So work done is equal to force multiplied by distance in the direction of the force. So the force we know is 125. Distance is 60 cm, which we need to convert to meters, so it's 0 0.6. So you will get 125 multiplied by 0 0.6, 7.5 times 10 to the power 1, or equals to 75 joules. Okay, speed at which the arrow leaves the bow. Okay, so you have to equate. Uh, this work done because you say energy transfer is 75 percent stock so this is the energy stock so we need to take 75 multiply by 0 0.75 so you will have the energy that's remaining 56.25 joules so this is the energy you have then to calculate the speed at which it leaves uh, we have to equate half mv square with 56.25 because all this pot elastic potential energy is going to be transferred to kinetic energy and when the arrow first leaves because it's going against gravity you will have the maximum velocity then energy will be transferred to gravitational potential energy that's why it slows down so you just have to solve this so half m will be 0 0.18 v square then you just do the rest okay maximum height reached by the arrow mm -hmm. then what you do is you equate your 56.25 with mgh then you substitute for your mass inside which is 0 0.18 g is 10 and then you solve for what is h and you will solve as well okay so it's fairly easy so you see the main thing you need to pay attention to this type of questions is always a unit. Be very disciplined, okay, in the unit. So they give you a lot of pictures so that to distract you. But mainly look out for the unit. Make sure you get the right unit and you will do fine. So if you like, like our video, continue to subscribe. All the best for your O levels. See you.